This voiceover deals with how cells direct the traffic of the proteins they make. It looks at how proteins produced on ribosomes in the cytoplasm might end up in the rough endoplasmic reticulum as the first stop on the way to a lysosome or even to being secreted outside of the cell. That is to say, how do proteins know to be packaged into rough ER, in fact, removed from the cytosol and put into any one of the organelles, including RER, mitochondria, chloroplasts, etc. Let's take a moment to consider where all of these internal cellular membranes might have come from. You may recall that we have an explanation for the origin of mitochondria and chloroplasts. These were free-living prokaryotes at one time, either bacteria, or in, in the case of mitochondria, or photosynthetic bacteria, blue-green algae, in the case of chloroplasts, that somehow got engulfed by a primitive eukaryotic cell, and instead of being digested to nothingness, became endosymbionts, and hence the endosymbiotic hypothesis might explain the origin of these particular organelles. And you'll remember that supporting that endosymbiotic hypothesis is the fact that both chloroplasts and mitochondria actually have their own DNA, uh, and that they make some of their own proteins. It turns out, however, that most of the proteins in a mitochondrion or a chloroplast are not actually encoded on the DNA in those organelles, but are made from genes in the nucleus of the host cell, and therefore these proteins have to move from the cytosol into those organelles. This illustration suggests what might have been the origin of the intracellular membranes, specifically the endomembrane system, which actually includes the nucleus. So you have on the left a prokaryotic cell with its DNA. We know that the DNA of bacteria is not free-floating in the cytoplasm of the cell, but is actually attached at one point to the cell membrane, and so that's shown here. We also know that bacteria have ribosomes translating the messenger RNAs into polypeptides that end up outside the cell, essentially secreted proteins, and these ribosomes are actually attached to the cell membrane. And so the idea is that at some point an ancient prokaryotic cell might have experienced an invagination, an inward growth of some membrane, including that part of the membrane which would have ribosomes on it, and you can see the beginnings in the middle picture of a membrane that might eventually enclose a nucleus and actually contain ribosomes bound to it. And later, an ancient eukaryotic cell would have a primitive nucleus, presumably with nuclear pores, because eukaryotic cells have nuclear pores, which contains the DNA inside the nucleus and which is intimately associated with endoplasmic reticulum. So we have an idea of how the endomembrane system, the intracellular membranes, might have evolved. And when we have that idea, along with the endosymbiotic hypothesis, we really are talking about how eukaryotic cells evolved from a primitive bacterium or other prokaryote. Now let's just take a look at this illustration of a gut endothelial cell because it has most of the kinds of internal membranes that we find in cells. Cells, when they differentiate, may not have to do a lot of secretion, and so they might not have a lot of RER and Golgi, but gut cells, which do a lot of secretion of enzymes that end up in the gut, have all of the membranes. And, of course, all cells have mitochondria, uh, and all eukaryotic cells have a nucleus. So here we see in, in profusion all the different membrane-bound compartments in the cell. How does a cell know to put the right proteins in the right places in the cell, in the cytosol, in the RER, in a lysosome, in a peroxisome, in the various organelles that you see here? 